Hey guys, I just uh, I wanted to bring some stuff up with you. Sometimes I find strange things funny. It's hard for me to explain to other people why I find it funny. So walking down the streets of uh, New York is a little bit different. So I grew up kind of in a suburb type area. Uh, uh, just a small each town. You're not walking past 600 people a day. You're really just seeing a handful of people across the sidewalk. You know, you just kind of give them a little wave or a little head nod. You don't really talk to them, you don't really say much to them. But it took some adjusting whenever I came to New York. Walking down Times Square was a process for me. Eventually I got used to it and I was like, okay, I can't just, I can't be stopping and talking to every three feet because someone is trying to get my attention. I have to just keep moving and I got, I got a lot better at it. But some people have techniques that are very sneaky and you can't just walk away from it. We were on our way to something. We were going to, I don't even know what it was. We're walking down, we're in Times Square. We have a destination. I got my blinders on. I'm focusing, I'm making sure, like, hey, we are going to our destination. There's people talking left and right. They're trying to get my attention. I'm just focus, focus. Not really paying any attention to these people around me. Back in the distance behind, I hear a guy saying, hey man, you don't hate black people, do you? I know in my head, I'm like, I just need to keep walking. I just need to move forward. This is not something I'm especially paying attention to, but something in the back of my head tells me like, oh, you can't just, you know what, you don't hate black people. You need, you need to turn around and tell this guy that you don't hate black people. You need to explain why you don't hate black people. And and I just I just couldn't keep walking. And I stopped, it's like, eh, no. And I turned around and I was like, oh, I don't hate black people. And so he's talking to me, he got me. He's now looking me in the eyes. And he's like, okay, good. I was just wondering, cause you know, we're gonna have, I don't even know what it sounds like. We got some black comedians performing and we just were trying to sell some tickets and I, I don't even know what it was. He has me engaged now. I know I'm not buying whatever he's selling. I know that this is a waste of time. It's a wasted conversation for both of us. I'm not paying for it. I'm not buying anything, but I, I can't just walk away. You're talking to me that would be rude. If I just broke away and left, I'd be like, bye. He's like, I think I hate black people. Similar situation. I hear a guy off to the side saying, hey man, you don't want your wife to have a bad time, do you? And so I'm like, no, 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 of course I want my wife to have a good time. And there he's got, I'm looking him in the eyes now. He has my eye contact, crap. I can't walk away. If I just walk away now, I'm being rude. I can't just walk away. He got me, he got me. I would suggest not wearing the name of your high school on your shirt, because sometimes People will get you that way. I'm walking down the street. I hear someone say, hey man, did you go to Pine Richland High School? And so I'm thinking, oh, is there someone from high school here that knows me? Did someone else go to Pine Richland High School and they recognize me because they went to the same place and now they're seeing me on the street of New York City and just saying hi? Of course it's not. It's just some random guy. I've never seen him in my life. He saw my t-shirt, which I forgot I was wearing. And now it's got me in a conversation that I can't pull out of because I feel like I'm being rude. <sighs> Another time, I'm walking down the street, this guy walks up to me, hey man, do you, do you like reggae music? He has a CD, he's showing it to me. And I'm like, uh, no, I mean, it's not really my thing. And he's like, you know what? This is a new kind of reggae. I actually made it myself. I'm just trying to share it with people. It's, uh, it's gonna, I think it's gonna change the world. It's gonna be great. Now, I just wanted to, to let you listen to it and see if you, you know what, maybe it's not your thing, but just give it a listen and see what you think. I was like, all right, you know what, this guy's just trying to make it. He just wants to share the word. He just, he just wants other people to try it out. Listen, it's kind of like the first taste is free here by my second album kind of thing. I was like, okay, you know what, all right. I, I, I grabbed the CD that he's holding right in front of my face. I grabbed the CD and I'm like, okay, well, I'll give you a listen. I start walking away and hey, hey, whoa, man, you're not just going to take that, are you? I mean, you're not just going to steal that from me, are you? I was like, oh, you, just, you just gave it to me. You just said you were you were just trying to spread the music. And he's like, yeah, man, you can't just walk away. You can't just steal something from me. I was like, oh, then take it back. He's like, hey, I don't want to take it back. I just want you to pay for something that you took. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to put this on the ground. I didn't want this. I'm walking away. Everyone sees this. I did not want to buy this. Man, he got me. He got me good. Each of these situations, my wife told me, what is wrong with you? I told you, just ignore people. They're all trying to sell you something. Just keep walking. And then we actually ran into this other guy who was, again, trying to sell us stuff. And uh, I think he was like a comedian. He was gonna have a show, you know, a couple blocks down. He was trying to get people to buy tickets, come to his show. Hey man, I hope I'm not intruding. I, uh, 
I just wanted to let you know, like I got a show going on. I, uh, I'm kind of new. I'm trying to I'm trying to make it, and um, I'm selling tickets. They're real cheap, but I think I think I'm pretty funny. I mean, I'm like the humblest person you'll ever meet, uh, but I think I'm pretty funny. I think I'm gonna make it, and uh, I just wanted to you know get some people to come to my show. Did he just say I'm the humblest person you'll ever meet? I kind of feel like that is the opposite of humility. Outside of Times Square, you still see a lot of crazy things, so um, we were just kind of near a park. There wasn't actually a whole lot of people around, and this car just kind of pulls up and parks, just like on the other side of the road. I didn't think really think much of it, but I glanced at it. It's, it's a very unique looking car. It's really big. It's like a big Cadillac looking thing. I don't know what kind of car it was, but it's all white. It's really big, like hood uh, on the car and it's got like these these horns on the front. I don't know what the brand is. I don't know if those are custom horns. I just know this is a unique looking car. And this guy steps out of it in full cowboy regalia. I mean, you see boots first and then they come out and they got the jeans. They got the, the, the hat, putting on the hat as he gets out of the car. It's this big leather hat. Uh, he's got that kind of like blue long sleeve shirt with leather vest with tassels on it. Uh, little cowboy tie which is like a little like leather piece of string that like goes around and you cinch it up it's just like this i, I don't know what say. i got with it you know has a big belt buckle and i'm just kind of looking <laughs> he turns towards us and it's this chinese guy and he's fully dressed in western wear like a full head to toe western wear dressed chinese guy it caught me i'd never seen that before it caught me off guard i was thinking like oh like i wasn't expecting that at all my brain is like trying to process what i'm seeing right now and my wife leans over to me and she's like, hey, hey, do you know what they say? And I was like, huh, no, what? Uh, she says, they say, yee-haw. Another thing you'll see pretty frequently in New York um, are beggars. Depending where you are, you see different kinds of beggars. So we were in this kind of nicer area. I wouldn't even say it was like an upscale area. It was just kind of like a strip mall type, type thing, pretty small. This guy that I wouldn't have even known who was a beggar, he just was you know, dressed kind of nice. And he walks up to us and he says, hey man, I'm just trying to make a buy. Could you spare 20? I guess kept walking and you know, me and my wife just kept going. And I turned to her and I was like, did he just ask us for a 20? And she's like, yeah, I think he did. And I was like, wow, that's, that's a pretty ballsy move. You know what? That's actually a pretty good move. I mean, he wouldn't do this if it's not worked at least a couple times, right? It's not like I'm walking around in nice clothing. I don't look rich. Uh, I just have t-shirts and shorts off. Uh, he might have been dressed better than me. Just another time, we were just kind of like walking around. This guy comes up, and, you know, real quiet, real humble, real, real nice. Just says, hey, hey man, uh, I'm just trying to get something to eat. I'm really hungry. I'm starving over here. And if you just help out with a couple bucks, I'd really appreciate it. And... You know, I appreciated that he, he at least, you know, he asked nicely. I nicely declined because he had me buy a good 200 pounds. And weird things don't just happen in New York, they happen everywhere. So I was, uh, years ago, I was at this youth retreat, um, which were like middle schoolers. So these kids were like in their early teens or something. So they're the older kids, but still kids, they need supervision. One of the things that they had there, um, they had this guy here with like, I don't know, maybe like eight horses and he was, not necessarily giving riding lessons, but just letting kids ride horses. You know, I had a group of kids, they all wanted to do this, so we went over and he asked, hey, does anyone here have experience riding a horse before? Now, when I was about their age, one time, I rode a horse, probably in a similar situation. They said, cool left to go left, cool right to go right, pull back to stop, and squeeze your leg as they go. And that's all the direction they gave us. The one instruction I remember is him saying like, no, nah, make sure you don't let the horses just eat whatever they want because they have bits in their mouth and it makes it hard for them to chew. So if they eat something off the ground, uh, they could have trouble chewing it, it gets stuck in their throat, they could choke, they could die. And so we're walking down this trail and uh, at one point, like it just kind of everyone stopped and he looked down. I think he saw like an apple or something. And so he slowly started reaching down for the apple and I'm like, whoa, whoa, I'm pulling back on this thing. And I realized like, I can't stop him. The two-ton animal, I'm a, like I'm like a 10-year-old kid, 12-year-old kid, what am I supposed to do? Anyways, I don't really remember the rest of that, but that was the sum total of my experience. I raised my hand, I said, I've ridden a horse before, and that was all the information he needed. 
didn't ask any follow-up questions. She said, great, awesome. So I'm gonna leave this pack. I'm gonna be up there. Um, there's gonna be like, you know, seven people trailing. You're gonna be in the back. You're gonna be the last one. And if any of these kids, if the horses start veering off and going on their own way, I need you to go wrangle them and bring them back. Oh, he's looking for someone experienced, not just someone who has done it. Because I know, pull left to go left, pull right to go right. Pull back to stop and squeeze your legs to go. And he's looking for someone who knows how to wrangle. And so I say, okay. Luckily nothing happened. But uh, I think maybe the instructor should have asked at least one follow-up question. Something else that regularly happens. Um, I don't know how or why. It seems to happen to me very frequently. But I will run face first into a spider web. You know, and it just kind of like rests across your face. You walk into it, it's like across your eyes. You're trying to grab it and pull it off. It feels all stringy and you're like, I'm just going out to get something out of my car. And I'll go through this fence, open the gate. I walk through the gate, get a spider web right in my face. Ah, oh, come on, man. Go get the thing out of my car. Come back through the same gate. Nothing has changed. It's like 30 seconds later. I walk through another spot. It hits me right in the face, right across my eyes. I'm trying to pull it off my face. And I'm like, what the heck? I literally just walked through here. Was the spider just sitting there trying to clothesline me, waited till I went through, then strung another line thinking like this one will get him. Another time I was walking with my friend who is a good six inches taller than me. I'm behind him. We're just walking. I'm like, I'm like four feet behind him walking. We're walking in a field. There's not even trees around us. All of a sudden, spider web right across the face. I walk right into it. I'm pulling it off. I can feel it coming off, like it's around my ear and stuff. I'm getting it off. I'm trying to get it off my hands. So it's all sticky. I was like, "Dude, did you just walk into a spider web?" And he turns around, like, "No." Oh. And I was like, "You're like six inches taller than me. And you were four feet in front of me. We're walking in the same place. There's not even trees around us. How did I just get hit with this spider web?" The worst one is when it's nighttime and you're walking through a spider web. So, like, you're coming home late, I'm fumbling with my keys, trying to find the right key. It's dark, can't really see very well. I'm just walking up the porch, and all of a sudden I feel like, like it's right across my whole face. You know, sometimes it just feels like a little line. You get a little line, walk into it, you feel it, you just take it off, try to get it out, get it out of your face. Um, it wasn't one of those. It was like, you know, bam! Like, I feel like I just walked into the middle of a spider web. A freshly built spider web, if you've ever seen them, the spiders like sit right in the middle of this big circle. And I felt like I walked like right, there's the target, right in the middle of the circle. And so I'm like, you know, freaking out, trying to get off. It's fresh, it's sticky. It's like sticking to my hands, I can't get it off. And then after I do this for a little while, I'm trying to get everything off. You kind of just sit there and your spider senses start tingling. You know what I'm talking about? Where you're feeling for any slight motion on your body, anywhere at all. And you're like hyper aware of everything happening. You're ready to slap. If you feel the slightest movement on you, you're ready to slap it, you're ready to punch it, because you know there's a spider on it. So a little breeze happens, and it moves the hair on the back of my neck. I think it's a spider, and I try to get it. And then, okay, hold on, hold on, that was it. A piece of spider web blowing blow the breeze, and if you pulls your hair, and you try to get it out of there, and then eventually you just have to go inside, you're like, there's a, there's a spider, I know there's a spider on me, I'm gonna bring it into the house, I'm gonna go look in the mirror, because I know there's a spider on me, and there's never a spider on you. The spiders never make it onto, at least they never show themselves. They're probably in my house right now. I would love to know if these kind of things ever happen to you guys. Uh, if they do, leave a comment, let me know. Uh, I'd love to hear how you react to these kind of situations. Excuse me. Will you talk to me? Will you look at me? Focus on me. Look at my nose. Focus on my nose. Not looking at me. Be looking behind me. Look at my nose. I'm right here. Hello. Stop looking behind me. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it.